Good morning. Welcome once again to Sunday School with New Life Church of Orlando, 3311 North Powers Drive in the beautiful city of Orlando, Florida. Bishop Derek W. Hutchins is our pastor. I'm Ruthie Warren. Today is Sunday, October the 11th, 2020. Our study is taken from Christian Life series, Union Gospel Press. And we know that in our lessons, we're talking preparation of a nation, Israel. And as we continue to look at Israel, we think of ourselves because we too are God's chosen people. Those of us who are called by his name. The central thought of our study for these few lessons is instructions for Israel. Last week, we talked about Moses' covenant, the conditional covenant. And it said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, talking to Israel, and keep my commandments, then shall you be a peculiar treasure above all people unto me, thus saith the Lord. And Israel's response was, all that the Lord has spoken, that we will do. I want you to keep that in your mind as we look at our lesson today. We're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. Our lesson is entitled, God Gives the Ten Commandments. But now I want you to remember their commitment on last week. All that you have said that we will do. In our lesson today, the Ten Commandments, we have two tables. Table one, table two. Consequently, we have two outlines. Outline one is going to talk about the tables, number one, and the commandments thereon. Outline number two is going to talk about the second tablet and the commandments that are thereon. Did you get that? A point. There are two tablets, and at the end, I'm going to make, give you a summation conclusion. So remember, there are two tablets, four commandments on one and six commandments on the other. Let's read them. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 11 is table one. And God spake, God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Commandment number one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Commandment number two, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. We know about jealous. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Commandment number three, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, number three, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Commandment number four. We're still on tablet number one. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord himself made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day 
and hallowed it. Table number one, four commandments. These four commandments is man's relationship to God. Man's relationship to God. Now, let's move on to table number two. The sixth remaining of the Ten Commandments. We'll start with Exodus verse number 12. Watch this. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Respect. Commandment number six, thou shalt not kill. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And number 10, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Tablet number two, the sixth commandment. This represents man's relationship to his neighbor, humanity to humanity. The Ten Commandments, very basic. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. The laws cannot be arbitrary. They must have a moral base. God himself wrote the Ten Commandments. While we are not under the law, the law has much to teach us about God and about how we should live in this world today and together. The law provides the way of life. Listen, Moses was charged. One of his assignments was to teach it to Israel. Don't let these things slip. He was to teach the commandments, the law, and the statutes. And thus he did. Now, in today's society, many of us would lean on the thought that we're not under the law. Have you ever said that? Or have you heard it said that we're not under the law? And even to the point of saying, thank God that we are not under the law. Well, listen, God didn't just save Israel to save them. He saved them to bring them into a place where they would have a relationship with him. Consequently, that is our purpose as well. We need to come into a place of relationship with God. Because of Christ's resurrection and the new covenant that he established in his blood, we are not under the law, but we're under grace, Romans 6 and 14. While we are not under the law, we are under the authority of the law. We recognize the eternal principles. Remember, tablet number one, our relationship to God still holds true today. Remember, tablet number two, our relationship to mankind. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. We still are under those laws, the Ten Commandments. It is just a moral statue, a moral ordinance, if you will. Now, while we say that we are not under the law, let's look at Matthew 5 and 17. Jesus said, I am not come to destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Psalms 119 and 11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hide the word in your heart so that it is easier to keep the law of God. Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Show me your way, God, to righteousness. Psalms 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. 
Thank God we're not under the law, but under the blood of Jesus. By the nevertheless of God's son, Jesus, we're under the unconditional law of grace and truth. What are your moral values? Lastly, I am reminding of the Pharisee when he tried to trick Jesus up and ask him, Lord, which one of the law is the greatest? And let me read. When the Pharisees asked Jesus the question, Master, which is the greatest in the law? Jesus said unto him, tablet number one, did you get it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That encompasses tablet number one. And then he said, the second of the greatest is this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Therefore, if you do these things, you have completed the Ten Commandments. If you love your neighbor as yourself, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. Are we still under the law? Not in principle, but in actuality, in essence. By the nevertheless of God, Jesus' Son, we are under the unconditional law of grace and truth. What are your moral values? Israel's response was, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. But what about you? What do you say? Are you all in? Who of you is on the Lord's side? God bless you. See you next week.